Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from around the world. Let's dive into it. This first question comes from Suhail from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. Suhail says, "Hey DG, I hope you're doing well. I am Suhail. I hope you're doing as uh, I hope you're doing well as well." Uh, he says, "I have one question for you that I'm very confused with. So here it is: Dinosaurs like Lambiosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Saurolophus, and various Ceratopsians have all been portrayed with Albertosaurus and Despletosaurus. I'm seriously confused. Are these settings incorrect, or did both Tyrannosaurs coexist? Thanks a lot." P.S. Allosaurus is my favorite Jurassic theropod. <clears throat> well, Suhail, I'm glad Allosaurus is your favorite Jurassic theropod. Um, yes, um, everything that I know about Albertosaurus and Despletosaurus is that they did live at the same time in the same place. So those uh, murals that you're seeing in those pictures are correct as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know. Um, I think what happened, I, I guess your question is probably how did two Tyrannosaurus share the same environment since they were probably competitors? They were. Based on their skeletal design, it looks like Albertosaurus was probably better suited for taking on the Hadrosaurs and Despletosaurus, who was a little bit more robust, was probably better suited for taking on the slower moving um, Ceratopsians. So that's probably how two giants shared the same environment because they sort of divided up the food source. And that's really what happens today when you have major predators living in the same environment. They basically are capable of coexisting by dividing up the food source. Now, uh, that doesn't mean they weren't rivals. And I guarantee you that if a big Despletosaurus came upon the kill that an Albertosaurus had made, I have no doubt Despletosaurus would have bullied him and taken his prey. But um, uh, that seems to be the case. From what I see, though, it looks like Albertosaurus was more plentiful. And so they probably outnumbered Despletosaurus. So in all, in my opinion, Albertosaurus probably was the more dominant uh, Tyrannosaurid, even though Despletosaurus was quite a bit bigger and more robust. All right, Christina from Rochester, New York says, Hello, DG. My question to you is, is there any way of knowing if there might be an earlier species before Australopithecus africanus? Um, I know that this is the most current species that was found and researched. I know in research that it's very difficult to find these types of remains of early species especially because anthropologists might not know where to dig or how far to dig. You know, Christina, that's exactly right. And that's the case with all prehistoric life. We can never know for certain if we found the earliest of a species, the biggest of a species, whether in some cases we've even found a male or female of that particular species. Now, I will tell you this. Uh, when it comes to uh, hominids, that is creatures that ate hominy, I... Okay, that was an absolute terrible joke. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to early humans, that's something I don't study. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just not that interested. I know that sounds a little wacky, but I'm not that interested in it. The, what I know about early man is based on the Geico commercials that I've seen. I'm very familiar with those early cavemen, but from what I understood, they can bowl, they can fly, they can cook. Uh, but anyway, again, <laughs> I, I'm very sorry, Christina. I just don't know enough about the subject. But I, like I said to my original point and to your point, yeah, there's no way of knowing if we found the earliest remains and whether or not um, when we find additional remains, whether that justifies that that be given a new species name or in fact it's the same thing that was found earlier by somebody else. Those kinds of problems plague paleontology and and uh, geology and anthropology, or not so much geology, but archaeology and anthropology, those things are some of the hardest things to know. And so a lot of times when I hear somebody definitively say, this is the size that this dinosaur could grow, to me that's just, that's crazy, because how could you possibly know that? What if um, all we had ever found in the fossil record were dwarf mammoths? And then one day somebody finds an adult imperial mammoth. Well, suddenly the whole world is different. Well, the same thing can happen with any species. We may not have necessarily found the biggest. We don't know if we found the earliest. Um, but that's what makes this science so exciting as well. I'm very sorry, Christina, that I wasn't able to answer your question definitively. But I do agree to your point. We just don't know. All right, Martin from... Sh well, what would you think of my Geico commercial thing? Isn't that neat how I worked that in? <laughs> I better get a sponsorship out of that. I'll tell you right now. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'll pay me. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably get sued for using their name. <laughs> okay, Martin from Chicago, Illinois. Hey, DG, 
I'd like to say you're doing an excellent job on the videos. Well, thank you very much, Martin. I hope you don't follow that up with, I'd like to say it, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> okay, my question is, what in the world could have Baldo, uh, uh, Bal, Baldauer? I still don't, is it Baldauer? Is that how you pronounce that new dinosaur? I haven't even seen enough of it to know. What could it used its two claws for? Uh, also, did you notice the vestigial third finger? How incredibly bird-like this guy is. Martin, I saw pictures, and the pictures I saw were pretty low res. I could definitively see that second, what looks like a second killing claw, for lack of a better term. Man, that is a confusing dinosaur. I don't know why he's got that. And I didn't look at it close enough to see that it had a, um, a vestigial third finger. For those of you that may not know what Martin's referring to, what that is is a vestigial finger is basically a finger that's going away, not used for anything. Uh, it's sort of like uh, when you look at pictures of Tyrannosaurus rex and they always show them with two fingers. In fact, Tyrannosaurus rex has a vestigial third digit, a third finger that's just greatly reduced and appears to be of no value. And so um, it's using the f losing the function of it and therefore it ultimately loses it. So Martin, I have not yet had a chance. This is such a new discovery and I kind of heard about it late. Um, and I'm really just kind of starting to look into it now, but whatever it is, man, it is a cool looking dinosaur. And from what I understand, I think it's Mark Norell. You know, earlier I thought Hans Dieter Seuss had been the one that found it, but I may not have read that correctly because I recently saw something where Mark Norell from the American Museum of Natural History is associated with it. And I'll tell you something, Norell knows his stuff. He is, a, he is one of the nicest guys. Um, and he really, really knows his stuff, especially when it comes to feathered dinosaurs. I'm going to be very excited to hear more information from him uh, if, in fact, he's the one heading this thing up, the study of it. Okay, Vincent from Poughkeepsie, New York. Hey, DG, what's happening? Not much, Vincent. Hey, Vincent, since you're from New York, shouldn't we be calling you Vinny? Yo, Vinny, what up? You know, that's terrible. <laughs> Anyway, Vincent, there's not a lot going on. Um, he says, I have a few questions I'd like to ask. If a Utah Raptor met Smilodon, would, what would they do? Would they fight? Well, that's a great question. Um, two different animals separated by millions of years, both, um, uh, both being predators, both having some pretty nasty weapons. I don't know what they'd do. My best guess would be that even if Megalodon thought he could take him, he would probably have the brain capacity to see all the weapons and go, man, it's not worth the time, it's not worth the fight. Unless they were starving and absolutely needed to fight because the food source was, was not there, I think they probably literally would have given each other a wide berth. Uh, it says, also when I was watching The Last Days of the Dinosaurs, which he thought was pure awesomeness, I thought, I thought what would have happened to the future of the human race if a monstrous meteor didn't kill off the dinosaurs. Any comments? Vincent, predicting the future is tough. Um, there's no way of knowing what would have happened if dinosaurs would not have been eliminated. My best guess would be that I think raptors would have taken over the planet. They would have become the most efficient, and I think ultimately they would have replaced even the giants like Tyrannosaurus. And I do believe that most of the dinosaurs would have dropped in size. I think they would have become much smaller. All right, uh, finally, Bashkar from Delhi, India. Hi, George. Namaste to you from your number one Indian fan, uh, Bashkar. Namaste to you, too. It's very nice to hear from you, buddy. He says, why do you think dinosaurs grew to such huge sizes? Has it had something to do with the oxygen content in the air? Why don't we see animals growing to such sizes today? Bashkar, that's a great question. Yeah, it appears that when the meteor struck in the Yucatan Peninsula, it changed the level of oxygen on the planet. And if you're big, you require more oxygen than if you're small. And if the oxygen percentage is dropped, as dramatically as we think, that probably impacted any animal's ability to grow to giant sizes. Remember, the bigger you are, the more needs you have, and oxygen is an absolute need. And when the oxygen level drops, you're the first guy to, to die. You just can't survive. Okay, you guys, if you have a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. I'll do my very best to answer you. For you young people out there, always practice your reading. And for everybody, I appreciate so much the kind manners and the courtesy you all extend to me. And I hope you do that to all your friends and neighbors because it makes the world a whole better place. Till next time, you guys take care and I'll see you all soon.